Okay, picture this. In the not-too-distant future, you're heading out on a space vacation, and you need to decide which items are worth bringing along. But instead of checking the weather forecast, you open a gravity simulator. That's because you need to know how each object will behave on different planets. For instance, should you take this metal shovel with you or not? Well, according to your itinerary, it's going to be a long, long trip. You're planning to visit every planet in the solar system and even a few moons. But due to the difference in gravity on these space bodies, you're not sure how useful some of the objects you're going to bring along will be. Well, let's start with the basics. Tupperware. I don't know about other space travelers, but us Earthlings carry our Tupperware around everywhere we go. And still, if you were to transport it to, let's say, Mercury, it would most likely fly away into the atmosphere. These plastic containers you use to keep your food are too light. And since the gravity on Mercury is two and a half times weaker as gravity on Earth, well, maybe you'll have to fill your plastic containers up before taking them out of your spaceship to have a picnic. If a Tupperware container weighs about a half a pound on Earth, it'll weigh just a quarter of that on Mercury. Now, if we add some bananas, a handful of baby carrots, and two watermelons, then it'll be safe to carry it out of your space vehicle. You'll just have some difficulty making it all fit in in a standard-sized container. But wait! Before you do that, you should know that the atmospheric temperature on Mercury can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that any plastic container will instantly melt as soon as it gets in contact with the air. It'll burn up all the food, too. You can probably try taking a titanium container, that will work, or just stick to astronaut food. Now, shall we say Venus? Okay, Venus. If you were to take the same empty container to Venus, it would behave similarly to how it does on Earth. This is because Venus is also known as our planet's twin. These two have much in common. For example, almost the same size and mass. And when the topic is gravity, the formula goes like this. The bigger the mass and the greater the density, the stronger the gravity. Venus's gravity is approximately 10% weaker than Earth's. So, yes, you may leave your spaceship with your container, empty or full, and enjoy a beautiful and scenic lunch on the surface of Venus. Now, you'll have to figure out a way to eat without taking your spacesuit off, though. The atmosphere of Venus is filled with sulfuric acid, which can irritate your nose and throat and cause difficulties in breathing. Or worse, much worse. Now, you'll have to forget about taking anything too light outside on Phobos. A little hint for you, it's not a Greek island. Not even Greek yogurt, although it's a cool name. It's actually one of Mars's moons. Here, even your spacecraft would need a little extra help to keep close to the ground. If it weighed as much as a school bus, any regular-sized person could pick it up with just one hand. This is because on Phobos, the inhabitants of Earth barely feel the weight of gravity. And be very careful when jumping around, because one leap and you may fly straight into outer space. Uh, passengers on board the Voyager spaceship, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Well, you're approaching Jupiter, a gas giant. A never-ending storm is raging in its atmosphere. Plus, there's no solid surface there, which means no landing for you on this planet. If you look out the window, it might seem that you are moving through a giant cloud. But for the purpose of your experiment, it'll work just fine. Try throwing into the air that baseball you brought along in case you get bored of all the space travel. And measure the time it'll take the ball to hit the surface. If on Earth, the ball will fall at a speed of 32,174 feet per second. On Jupiter, the same ball will hit the ground at a speed 2.5 times greater than that. That's because Jupiter is more than 10 times as large as Earth, and around 300 times as heavy as our blue planet. Now, if you move your spaceship just a little bit to the side, to one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, the situation will be completely different. Throwing a baseball in the air on Europa will mean never seeing it again. Gravity there is almost non-existent, which means that not only a baseball, but even a grown-up person can fly away any second. Now, on the other hand, if you decided to venture out of the spacecraft to explore Europa's gravitational field, why not try to lift the space vehicle itself? On Europa, a regular Earthling can easily lift up to 1,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of a full-size male moose. Hmm. 
Or you can lift a pyramid-like formation of nine regular people. Ah, the choice is yours. When approaching Saturn, be careful. While from afar, Saturn's rings look smooth and solid. From up close, you'll notice that they're made of chunks of ice and rocks floating in space. You won't want to have your spacecraft anywhere near those. There's also no solid surface on Saturn, which makes landing impossible. And the atmosphere is full of ammonia. Keep in mind that it's a pretty inhospitable environment for a human. Now inside the spaceship, you find a collection of sci-fi books, enough to fill an entire bookshelf. Altogether, they must weigh around 400 pounds. Yep, that many books. And like someone with a superpower, you try to lift over 200 pounds of weight at a time. But guess what? You fail! Because Saturn's gravity is too similar to that on Earth. Now in case you got confused with all this gravity talk, when we're measuring gravity, we're speaking about the power of the force by which a planet, or other space body, pulls objects toward its center. So if you need some help in organizing that sci-fi collection in alphabetical order, ask the crew to move the spaceship to a neighboring space body with a weaker gravitational pull. Like uh, Pluto. These days, it's not considered a planet anymore. Just a dwarf planet and one of the furthest from the sun's space bodies. You'll need an extra warm spacesuit to wear there. Pluto is freezing cold and has a tiny surface. It's smaller than Earth's moon. But it's a great place to test your strength. If on Earth it's kind of impossible for a regular person to lift an elephant, on Pluto, you'll be able to pick up a baby elephant weighing around 265 pounds. Or even a medium-sized elephant that can be as heavy as 2,000 pounds. On your way back to Earth, you make a pit stop on Uranus. The coldest planet in our solar system has an average temperature of around minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you attempt to get out of the spacecraft, you'll freeze mid-movement. Although gravity on Uranus is pretty similar to that on Earth, there's one thing that's very different – time. A two-week getaway on Earth turns into a three-year-long vacation on Uranus. Now, when you get sick of cold planets, you can travel back to warmer ones. <clears throat> Okay, now, Mars is definitely warmer than Uranus, but its average temperature is still about minus 81 degrees. On Earth, we only have such low temperatures at the South Pole during the winter. When you land on Mars, you'll start to feel light and strong at the same time. Mars's gravity is about 2.5 times weaker than that on Earth. So in other words, you'll probably manage to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. So, all those handstands you've been dreaming of doing, you've found a place to fulfill your dream. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.